I hope you guys are ready for a bit of a doozy today. Uh, do yourselves a favor, grab a pen, maybe like three sheets of paper, because we're about to go over like every single upgrade cycle you'll need for streaming from your very first webcam to professional camera quality, from uh, your first crappy microphone to like radio quality audio. So yeah, I, I hope you enjoy this because I'm pretty much gonna answer uh, every single question I've ever been asked on stream. <laughs> Upgrading gear is expensive, you guys know that. So you buy yourself your first $50 webcam and then six months later you wanna buy the $150 webcam, you have to take that $50 webcam and, and you know throw it in the back of your closet someplace useless. There is a right way to upgrade and there is a wrong way to upgrade. But if you can just get a little bit more efficient, you can go from starter to professional with very little waste. And that's, that's what we're focusing on in this video. Getting the best cheap stuff to start while still holding onto as much equipment as possible as we go through the upgrade cycle. It's hard to do. And I do want to remind you that I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Link to that down in the description down below. Also, if you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. That'd be great. Thank you. Cool, let's get started. Let's start with audio. Let's start with microphones. How do you go from your first microphone to the end goal? with as little waste as possible. I did a video uh, probably about two years ago now on audio and uh, microphones and mixers and, and I encouraged people to skip the USB mics and go straight to XLR mics and said mixers. Things have come a long way since then, not only in just USB mics, but also in streaming audio in general. And with these new upgrades, there are more opportunities to uh, avoid trashing an old mixer every time you upgrade to the new mixer, which was part of the issue with my original recommendation. So let's just jump into this. Very first thing you want to do is grab yourself a USB mic. Pretty much any USB mic from the 100 to $150 range is gonna sound pretty good, except, by the way, except the Razor Siren. Don't get the Razor Siren. Don't, don't get the Razor Siren. It's bad. That's like the only mainstream USB mic that's like objectively bad. The Blue Yeti, especially like the Yeti Nano and the Yeti X are both fantastic. The Samson G-Track Pro is beefy, but it sounds fantastic. The HyperX Quadcast is a, is a great microphone. As long as you set the polar pattern on the back to cardioid, and if you have no idea what I just said right there, it's um, make sure the little knob on the back, I think it's on the back, is set to the heart-shaped one. If you don't do that, it's not gonna sound good. I don't know why they added any other polar patterns on there. Keep it at cardioid, but let's actually uh, move forward with the HyperX because I, I like its functionality. I like that it not only comes with a stand and a shock mount, which is very important when it comes to mounting your microphone to your desk. But also, you can take off that stand and add a secondary little uh, mount that allows you to hook it to an arm. It comes with the upgrades built into it, so we're gonna move forward with that one. One thing is most important, you need to make sure that it is a microphone with a headphone jack. That little 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, that's very important, we'll get to that in a little bit, you'll understand why. So great, you're starting with the USB mic of your choosing. As long as it has a headphone jack, let's talk about your very first upgrade. USB mics are great and simple, easy to use, but they lack a lot of control. What happens if you wanna turn up the music in the middle of your stream? Maybe you wanna turn down your teammates in the middle of a fight without having to alt tab out to Discord. The next thing you'll want is a Go XLR or a Go XLR Mini. Not only will it give you the control to adjust your stream on the fly, it also has built-in compression, EQ, noise gate, etc. Plus, remember that headphone jack that I reminded you like five times to make sure your USB mic had? Well, the Go XLR and the Go XLR Mini both not only have an XLR input for plugging in professional XLR mics, but they also have a 3.5 millimeter microphone input for going out of that headphone jack of your microphone and directly into the Go XLR. Just take a standard aux cable, go straight from the mic into the Go XLR, and um, now you sound better. This setup should honestly last you for a while, but the moment you're ready, you have some extra cash, you're doing really well on stream, you want to upgrade to a professional microphone, let's pick you up a nice professional XLR mic. Now this upgrade is actually a lot cheaper than the previous one because just in general, the compression that's required for a low latency broadcast is pretty heavy. So you lose a lot of that crispness of real expensive microphones and really, at this point, anything over $100 is gonna sound almost exactly the same. And then you add in your game sound and your teammates and your music and there's just there's just a lot of noises, a lot of things masking the quality difference between really expensive microphones. So what I recommend is you figure out whether or not you want a condenser mic or a dynamic mic. And I do have a video comparing those two. I'll link it in the description or I think it's up in 
this corner. If you decide you want a condenser mic, which is more sensitive, the Blue Ember is fantastic. If you decide you want a dynamic mic because you only want the mic to pick up you and none of the sounds around you, uh, I recommend the Rode Pod mic. They're both fantastic mics. They're both a hundred bucks and uh, they both look amazing, which if you ask me, uh, I think a lot of streamers tend to underestimate the, uh, the power of a beautiful microphone. You see what we're doing here? See how we're going from beginning to end while wasting as few things as possible? Yeah, it's, it's nice. Let's talk about cameras. Now there are a lot more cameras and webcams than there are microphones. And I know it's overwhelming to look at the whole spectrum, but for the most part, you're gonna start with the basic, the Logitech C920. The C922 has maybe slightly more accurate colors, but that's nothing that can't be fixed in software. The C930E has a wider uh, field of view, that 90 degree field of view, which is kind of nice, but uh, it lacks in autofocus as well as clarity, which I don't think is a valid trade-off. Plus, both of those are like 30 to $40 more expensive than the C920, and I just, I just don't think it's worth it. If one of those two functions is super important to you, I get that. Uh, pick the webcam that best suits you. My suggestion is uh, go with the simple C920 and the money you would have spent on those slight upgrades, uh, spend that money on lighting instead. Lighting makes a way bigger difference than any of those two things. Plus, you can get an LED photography lighting panel for like 30 bucks. Seriously, I linked it down in the description below. Lighting is by far the most important thing you need for a solid looking camera. To start, pick up a cheap camera that you know you're gonna upgrade from later, but grab lighting that can last you your entire career. Get yourself a relatively inexpensive but versatile LED panel. The one I linked down below is going to need a power supply, which is also linked down below. It's like seven or eight bucks. And you're gonna hang on to the setup for a while. A cheap camera with solid lighting is just fine in terms of streaming right now. Upgrade your other stuff, and then when you're ready to revisit your camera, what you're gonna do is you're gonna upgrade to a mirrorless camera, specifically the Sony A5100. Now, I picked this camera for a, a couple very specific reasons. It's a fantastic choice. It's small, it shoots in 1080p 60, it has a flip-up screen, so if you ever want to take it out of your studio and go vlogging, uh, that is a must-have function. Oh, and the screen is touchscreen, by the way. But most importantly, it's the least expensive, good quality camera I could find with a replaceable lens system. Any videographer will tell you the glass in front of the camera is much more important than the body it's attached to. That single ability to upgrade and swap lenses is like the key function that puts a camera in a higher tier. A lot of people ask me about the A6000 or even like the A6400, and uh, I'll tell you why I think it's a waste of a couple hundred dollars to upgrade the camera. One, again, the lens is more important than the camera. Two, the features they add to them don't really apply to streaming, so you won't notice any difference. And three, it actually loses some features that you will need, so they're like a downgrade for like $500 more. I think the A6000 is $100 more, the A6400 is like $500 more. One, the A5100 and the A6000 have the exact same sensor, so the quality will be exactly the same, but the A6000 doesn't have a flip up screen. It stops halfway up, and if you've ever tried vlogging without being able to see yourself in a screen, you know that it is an actual nightmare. I'd also love to, at some point, take a look at the Canon M50. I haven't really gotten a chance yet. It's $100 more, and the lens does look a little bit beefier, but I don't know if it's actually better, and really until I get my hands on it and try it, I'm just, I'm not willing to recommend it. Plus, with my experience, Sony has always been a little bit easier to set up for streaming. It's pretty much plug and go, while Canon, uh, you kinda have to finagle things a little bit just to get a, a stream actually running on it. So for now, Stick with the Sony. Then along with the camera, you'll need a capture card, an HDMI cable, and a power supply. The Elgato Cam Link is a super streamlined and relatively inexpensive capture card, basically designed for plugging a camera into a PC. Um, honestly, any capture card will do. That's all a Cam Link is, but yeah, this, this is kind of what the Cam Link was designed for. And again, by the way, links to everything I'm mentioning down in the description. I've also included links to the HDMI cable and the power supply down below. I do want to mention that the power supply I linked down below is more expensive than other power supplies because uh, the name brand, the Sony name brand ones, also the Canon name brand ones are usually like five times the price of knockoff ones, which concerns me. I don't feel comfortable cheaping out on the thing that powers my very expensive camera. I recommend you go with a nice power supply. That's what I use, but it's on you. Let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about a streaming PC, a dedicated streaming PC 
you're planning on going to two PC setups. Single PC setups are easy, just get a powerful PC. Two PC setups, getting a streaming PC, uh, you can be a little more strategic with. This uh, is one of the things that we are constantly testing and rebuilding and trying new things to figure out the most optimal and cost-effective streaming PC we can make. Uh, it just takes a while because buying PC parts is expensive. <laughs> but we have done a good handful of builds and uh, here's what I would suggest so far. So just like everything else we talked about, I wanna build you something that you're capable of upgrading later. What I recommend doing is starting with an X264 build, which means your CPU is gonna be doing the encoding for the stream. And we're gonna start with an AMD processor because AMD uh, tends to excel in multi-core processing, which is something that OBS takes advantage of a lot. If you're on a super tight budget, you can start with a Ryzen 3, their four core, eight thread, uh, 3200G processor. It's got Radeon graphics built in, hence the G in the name, which means you won't have to buy a separate GPU just to get this PC running. It won't be the prettiest stream right out of the box, but you can run a 60 FPS stream without dropping any frames uh, as long as you don't have any kind of animated overlay. If you've got a tiny bit higher budget and you wanna start off a little bit stronger, you can go with the Ryzen 5, their six core 12 thread CPU, the 3600, which should give you about triple the power built into it. Keep in mind though, there's no G in the title of this one, which means you're going to need to get a graphics card separately. Uh, we picked up a GT710 on Amazon for like 40 bucks at the time. Again, I'll link to that down below. Since the CPU is the one doing all the heavy lifting on the encoding and everything it's running, uh, the GPU just kind of needs to be there to run the simple graphics you're doing. If you really want to see a comparison video between the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5 builds I'm mentioning here, uh, link to that down below as well, you know, little thingy up in the corner. You can see the difference in quality between between streams that these two can run. There you go. So you've built your PC, you've been running it for a little bit, you're ready to upgrade it and make your stream look silky smooth. PC upgrade time, here's what we're gonna do. Rather than upgrading that little CPU into a beefy one and having to toss out the old one and wasting $100 to $200, uh, we're gonna give that CPU a little buddy to share the workload and turn your PC into a real workhorse. We're gonna turn your PC into an NVENC streaming PC. If you have no idea what I just said right there, NVIDIA GPUs, which by the way, that's what we're adding. We're gonna put an NVIDIA GPU in there, have a dedicated encoder built into it specifically for streaming. And if you pick up one of NVIDIA's latest GPUs, even their low-end GPUs, they've got a brand new architecture built into it called the Turing architecture, which when you stream using that Turing architecture and the NVENC encoder, uh, the quality rivals that of X264, which until now, uh, X264 X4 is miles ahead in terms of quality from uh, NVENC. Now they're, now they're pretty, they're like this. I feel like I do this in like every video. There's always a reason for it. Which by the way, uh, if you're doubting me and you're kind of stuck on that like, no, X264 is better, train. Um, come check out my stream. I've been using NVENC for a while now and I'm, I'm currently using their latest Turing architecture in my GPU and it looks fantastic. So when we tried it out and we paired a GTX 1660, which by the way is the cheapest GPU with the Turing architecture built into it, and we paired it with a Ryzen 3. In fact, we paired it with a last gen Ryzen 3, the 2200G, which is the Ryzen 3 that I mentioned before, but the one before it. We got a fantastic looking stream because this thing was handling the quality and the CPU, it, they were working together. No dropped frames, buttery smooth frames, by by the way, next to zero compression degradation of the frames at all, and plenty of headroom for alerts, transitions, etc. So in the end, what you're gonna wanna do, take that original PC you built, grab yourself an NVIDIA GPU that has the Turing architecture. There's a, a list of all the GPUs and the prices next to them right here, so you can pick which, whatever, whichever one's in your price range and, and move on with that one. And uh, now you've got a workhorse of a streaming PC. You don't have to throw anything out. I guess I guess you may have if you got the Ryzen 5 and you gotta get rid of the GT710 so you lost like 40 bucks. But other than that, and that's all you lost and you got, a, you got a dope setup. Cool, last thing, we got our mic, we got our camera, we got our PC. One thing that you guys asked me about a lot and the last piece of this puzzle is the design of your stream. Your overlays, your alerts, your logo, all the, all the things that people get way too hung up on. My stance on stream design is clear and simple. Good design is important. Big design is not. You don't need a big flashy logo. You don't need a camera border that's bigger than the camera itself. Keep it simple. 
It's not meant to replace your personality, it's meant to complement it. And you don't need to get anything custom done yet. There are a ton of sites that offer great designs for really cheap or, or even sometimes free. We've mentioned Nerd or Die in a bunch of these videos. Stream Elements has a pretty good selection. We even in our Discord, by the way, the Alpha Gaming Discord, link in the description below, have a ton of free animations and overlays and alerts that you guys can use on your own stream for free. Find something cheap and clean that you can use until you saved up a couple hundred bucks to get something done professionally. Then at that point, find a designer on Twitter or like on Fiverr. Find someone that you can talk to about the design. Make sure there's communication. Make sure you can make edits when they come back with the first draft and it's not like, well, here it is, it's done. Those things are very important to getting what you want. You wanna save up for those and you'll be able to save up for them if you go with something clean and cheap in the beginning. Personalization, very important. And that's pretty much it. The only thing I can really think of right now is like room decorations and stuff to like spice it up, like these lights that you see behind me, but I kind of want to do like a whole separate video on stuff like that and keep this one about like the gear and the fundamentals, the basics. These are like fun things, you know? So yeah, comment down below if you want to see me make like a video on all the fun things I can find for, you know, maybe your friends and family to grab for you for Christmas or whatever. And just one more reminder, again, I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, link to my stream down below. If you have any questions about anything I said, please feel free to drop in there. And as always, happy streaming. Now run!